What's up everybody, on this video we're gonna be, just double checking my audio, we're gonna be reviewing and looking at the new um, LCG chassis released from Andorra, which is gonna be the aluminum chassis, which we have right here. All right, so the LCG chassis from Andorra was just released. Uh, I don't know exactly what date. I just got my hands on it. I actually ordered two for myself because I was interested in the concept. So real quick, let's go through the notes. Compatibility, boom, boom, boom. Everybody worries about compatibility. Is it compatible with the laydown servo? Yes, check. Um, will it fit my TRX4M? Bronco, check. Defender, check. Uh, high Trail, uh, KC10, check. Uh, Ford F150, check. Actually, if you put this on one of those um, monster truck ones, you're gonna really alter the whole thing. So maybe not check. Let's not check on those. It doesn't say on the actual website either. Will it fit my IR40 or my IR60? IR40 or my IR60? Check. Yes, it will. It's compatible, right? Compatible. You see, it says it right there. Psh, compatible. It's too bright. Too bright. Specifics. Part number is going to be M4M-111. 4M-111. All right. The material is aluminum. All right. I like the way they, they pronounce it like that. The weight that they say that Endura says it's going to be is 45 grams. I think I got a different number. Uh, it will be posted on the video because I weighed it. I don't know what they weighed it with the whole screw pack or not. So I think we got different numbers there, but <clears throat> this is with it assembled with basically the screws that hold the frame together and that's it. And that mount the ECM into place. All right, moving on. The size of it. So I'm assuming the length is 220 millimeters by 43 millimeters. That is what they say on their website. And my notes are no good because you can't see that. It's too bright. All right. <clears throat> what is the cost? We got the cost right here. The cost is $25.99. So now the big questions. What's the big deal between the aluminum, the carbon fiber, or the just stock chassis. What what should you care? What should make you make a decision on which one that you really want to get and everything like that? It's basically just gonna come down to one, uh, whoever's using it, what do you wanna use it for? What type of build are you building? So let me just go over a couple things and then you can make your decision hopefully. This also goes for real vehicles in the real world, in the real world, so on the stock chassis for the high trail and the rest of the trx 4 ms we have a c channel um chassis frame or frame chassis and everything so c channel means that it is exactly what it sounds like it looks like a c so let's zoom in right here so you can see the metal makes like a c formation okay and it does that on both sides it's mirrored on both sides of the c formation that C formation goes throughout the whole length of the chassis frame. Typically, a lot of vehicles back in the days used to be built like this. So that's where they got it from. It's a C chassis frame. Now, the carbon fiber chassis, what is the big deal with this one? Carbon fiber is supposed to be stronger, but extremely light. So it's just going to be completely flat but it does give somewhat flex if you can see right there you got some flex going on even the components themselves they will give a type of flex all right so i hope you guys can see that so that's going to be the big deal and the big design of this right here so if you have a vehicle that puts out a lot of torque which crawlers should put out a lot of torque or you just want to make them as strong as possible what they typically do is they take the C-channel and they'll weld a plate to it, which basically box it a box, makes it a box or a square all the way through, which basically they're boxing it in, 
if you ever heard that term, which will stop the chassis from twisting. Right now, I'm twisting the plastic. That's why it's really bending. But basically, it stops from these components bending like that. All right. So basically, what it is is just more rigid. This is going to be the weight of the actual factory um, TRX4M high trail chassis. So it should be showing on the screen right now. And then what we're going to do is we're going to switch it over to the carbon fiber chassis. And that's going to be the weight of the carbon fiber chassis showing on the screen right now. Okay, with all the accessories that come with it and the actual bolts that are used for the, the suspension. <clears throat> okay, and now we're going to look at the weight of the new aluminum. Injura, uh, High Trail, uh, LCG. This is actually, it's not even called the High, high Trail LCG chassis. It's the Universal High Trail Aluminium chassis. Okay, so now that we got the weights out of the way, let's look at the features, the big features between the new chassis. But real quick, first we're going to look at the features of the actual carbon fiber chassis which will be real quick i'm not gonna sit on it and talk about it too much so the carbon fiber chassis is gonna have obviously the same adjustability as the new aluminum aluminum uh lcg chassis so you can extend it to fit the high trail or you can shorten it to fit the rest of the vehicles it also comes with the carbon fiber lower ECM uh, tray so you could rest your ECM there and then you have a whole bunch of adjustability for the suspension um, upper upper suspension mounts on the front and rear of the, the carbon fiber chassis and it's actually very light as well as I'm going to flash up again the weight of the carbon fiber chassis okay this build is a little bit difficult to build it's not that bad but I will give it to Endura. They are looking to help and everything because I guess they're recognizing that it is a little bit difficult to understand the instructions. So with the new LCG aluminum chassis, <laughs> they provided a new uh, version of their basic instructions, which I really, really appreciate. And I hope everybody else notices and appreciates the effort as well so they redesigned their actual chart to tell you what screws you're using now unfortunately they're not one-to-one -one scale so i got a picture right here i'm going to show you guys with all the screws in place and they're just off slightly but endure is headed in the right direction and i do appreciate the effort so i hope you guys appreciate the effort with them as well and everything they made it a little bit more it feels like the exploded version is a little bit more blown out so that way you can actually see what is going on what parts are where so on and so forth now we only have a number one through seven over here in the identification uh column unfortunately when we're putting the extensions on we get a new number that pops up and it's just going to be that eight so it's like where are those screws uh you know i don't know and everything but we have a crazy amount of adjustability on this um, new aluminum uh, chassis. So we have these new adjustments on the front. So for the K10 and the F150, you have to pay attention to what adjustments you are putting into the front um, bumper mounts. So right here. So as you can see here, we use the rear holes with the rear hole on the actual bracket itself and then for the defender and the bronco we're going to use the front holes with the rear holes on the actual bracket itself i hope you understood that front holes rear holes on the bracket front hole uh rear holes and rear holes on the bracket for the k10 and the f-150 so if it gets confusing i hope you guys understand the concept of what they were trying to do here is show you exactly the positions that everything has to be. So now 
they also did something really cool with the extension plate that i'm going to show right here i was able to catch an awesome picture of it so the extension plate has a little indent into the aluminum showing you which side actually goes up against the back plate and everything so i really like that and if you look at the image on the actual um, instruction manual you could see that little indentation these are details that i always try to pay attention to it helps me with the builds and everything and then obviously if you're going to put this whole extension plate back on you need to use the thicker mounting bracket that goes in the back so i hope you guys can notice the difference between the one that goes on for the defender and the one that goes on for the k10 and the f-150 it is thicker so just pay attention to that so that way you don't have to reuse a whole bunch of screws so on and so forth so now the bigger screws that come in at that number eight are not going to actually go right into the aluminum over here for this back end piece that's for when you actually put the bumper plate the rear bumper uh one of these are the rear bumpers i can't remember which exact one i believe it's this one so when you put this into the back those two screws the number eight screws are going to lock in to the bumper plastic itself all right so don't get upset if you put it together and they're not holding they don't have anywhere to hold and everything so that's going to be the same concept for number four and also number four in the rear so those are not going to hold on until you actually put the physical bumpers in in place uh whether it be the high trail the defender whichever one you're using so now the other thing that's really cool with this um design that they did for the aluminum is basically what they did was allow us to drop the tray down into different positions and heights which was not something that they did with the actual um lcg uh universal chassis for the graphite version it only has one uh spot where it lays down typically sometimes i take this out a lot because i don't uh use it sometimes i always try to put everything to the front everything but for the people that do use it you know they i'm pretty sure this gives some interruptions when you're using it on a defender or a bronco and everything so some complaints probably went in or some people will talked about it and they noticed it and they addressed it with this version which is absolutely awesome so you got two different adjustable heights okay and not only that but you can eliminate it as well totally out of the picture i believe if you feel like it you can actually flip it up to the to the upside as well uh something that i'll try later on and everything but me being me and knowing that i don't want to use it at all i can take all this stuff out and drastically drop some weight in the back of the 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 whole the design as well and everything it will take away a little bit of that stability but not too much to the point where you're going to be like ah man this thing sucks so it's really cool i like the way they designed everything with this one it came out really really awesome that's why i bought two of them i was looking in depth at the pictures and i was like oh i really like the way you know it came out in my opinion i hope they take their time and design something like this for the actual um ascent 18 because the universal trash chassis that they have out right now for the ascent 18 i just don't like it or it's not even a universal chassis it's just a carbon fiber chassis i believe it has too many parts which require too many too much hardware which is making the weight over overdone um i watched the youtuber and i'll link that video in the description below i don't know his name i'll flash it up while i while i'm talking he did a, a weight comparison between the LCG chassis for the SN18. So definitely check out that video. It was awesome. What gave me the inspiration to do this video and drop all the components so that way I could get the chassis just to weigh them. So I was really happy to see that we're in the right direction with this, with this whole setup, as you guys can see. So if you just want a quick reminder, I'm going to put a rundown right now of all the weights right here and we're gonna have the aluminum on the top actually we're gonna do factory on the top um carbon fiber and then aluminum on the bottom so 
that's pretty much it. There's a lot of new things that they did with this chassis as well, which all the holes for the suspension are going to be tapped. So actually, they're not tapped. Let me zoom in and double check that. No, they are not tapped. What was tapped? There was something that I thought I saw that was tapped. All right, so no. Oh, they look like they are somewhat. If you look at them here from this angle, they look like they're tapped. Which we're going to find out right now. We'll grab a screw. So I have a regular stock screw right here. And they are tapped. So I put this screw in and it holds. That's in the front. Let's uh, go to the rear. And the rear. I knew it. I thought it was. It looks different because the lighting changes when I record. So yeah. All of the screws on the top row and bottom row of the front and back, left and right side are going to be tapped. So you can actually just screw the screws right in, which was something that I was wondering about because every time that I put the hardware in for the suspension, it typically has these nuts on it. <laughs> it sounds stupid the way I say it. But so this is basically the hardware for the actual LCG chassis with the carbon fiber. Okay, this is the universal. So this is the hardware for the suspension, the spacers to give the spring um, distance away from the actual LCG chassis itself and everything. So, and then the nut itself is what holds the screw in place where it's supposed to be, so on and so forth. Now that we have this new chassis and everything, they did provide us with the hardware and we do have the spacers in here so you can see the black spacers are there the screws are provided as well that we need to put in for the spacers and everything definitely use thread lock if you could get purple thread lock it's better but if you don't you only got the blue thread lock then that's fine just use that but so now i know because i opened it up and i was like oh man they didn't give you the bolts but I like that concept because it also lightens up again with the hardware. So we're not getting that weight up just because of the hardware that's that can be done just by tapping the, the actual frame itself. So again, they put some thought into this frame. I like it a lot. It has like when you get it in your person or in front of you, it has some curvature to it up here in the front which narrows into the front and it is, I know I said it is compatible with the laydown servo. Now, you're gonna have a lot of parts in here, in the kit. So let me just try to explain to you guys right now. So these small spacers right there, see how I got that big spacer there, big, big spacer there. Those big spacers are for the suspension. These small spacers that are like one inch or one millimeter spacers, Hope you guys can see them. There's a whole bunch in there. I think there's like four. So those little rings right there, those little black rings. If you're wondering to yourself, what are those for? If you're having issues, okay? If you're having issues where it looks like, oh, everything is too close, it's too tight. Uh, the, the, the bumper that I put in is too tight in the front. It's pulling the, the forks out. In that case, you take one of these screws out, you put a spacer in, and you close it back up. If you have to use a spacer on either side, that'll give you two millimeters in total, but one millimeter on each side. You could do this with the front and the back, depending on what you're doing and everything. So I hope this video really helps you guys out. If it does, give it a thumbs up. Let me know how it was, if you liked it. If I missed anything, definitely leave a comment below and let me know if I missed anything with this new chassis. I'm really happy and excited with this one. I want to do a build with it. I just got to catch up and I got to get some more parts for it. But other than that, this is one of the IR60 bodies that are going to be going on it. I really like doing this half bed stuff. So I cut the bed again and everything. I was able to spray paint it or actually airbrush it. <laughs> Something new that I'm getting into. All right. So with all that being said, my name is Hugo. Thank you guys for watching. Once again, Urban Crawlers. All right. Later.